Welcome to another edition of Active Living. We have probably one of the most active uh, ladies here with us today. This is uh, Sally Boley. She is the president of the Greater Detroit Jazz Society and also president or at least a member of the gardening club, local gardening club. And uh, she is involved in a lot, a lot of uh, different jazz activities around the Detroit area. So welcome to our show, Sally. Thank you, George. Thanks it's for having to, me. It's, it's great to have you here. Honor to be here. I've seen <laughs> your other interviews, and I feel very flattered to be here with you. Well, anyway, let's talk about your background a little bit. I mean, you you you're a jazz fan at this point, but were you always a jazz fan? Well, when I was a very young child, um, my mother. Everybody laughs, but my mother was a strolling accordionist. Really, in the forties. And she worked at General Motors, too, but she um, performed for General Motors parties and at the Kingsley Inn and the Fox and Hounds. And, you know, they used to have strolling well, accordionists and, yeah, and right. sing along. And um, she was very active in that for a while. So I did that. And then I, I took classical piano for several years and, you know, was involved in my church choir. I was the accompanist for the middle choir at my church. So wow. I was always involved in music at an early age, but not jazz. So when did, when did, you know, at what age did you kind of discover this jazz thing that's going on? Instead of playing all the notes that are on the, on the page, you know, when did you discover this free form of music called jazz? Uh, my mother and I used to travel all over to see live music, all kinds of music. And um, we used to go to the Fisher Theater for all the plays, and we just, we both loved music. And we found a place in Union Lake called the Peanut Cellar. Oh, really? And they had a fantastic jazz band there on Sunday nights. It was kind of like the Red Garter, although more sophisticated music at that time. Tom Saunders led the band. Wow. And his brother Dick Saunders, who was the managing editor of the Oakland Press, that at that time it was the Pontiac Press, played bass and tuba and uh, Chuck Moss on trombone. Right. And it was just an all-star band. And quite often when Wild Bill Davison came to town, you know, he was uh, Tom Saunders' best friend. He would come out to the peanut cellar and it was just wild. A lot of Detroit musicians came out and sat in and of course, Wild, Wild Bill, Bill. Wild Bill was a wild, wild man. Was aptly <laughs> named. I know. I, you know, believe it or not, the drummer that used to play for um, Wild Bill Davison actually played in my big band back in the back in the late 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 nineties. Oh, who's that? Frank Fogarth. Oh, I know, I know the Frank. name. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So Frank was a Frank was a great great drummer, and uh, you know I can see the the fun that they probably oh, had at that club. It was absolutely wild. They played for three hours on Sunday nights and it was just so much fun. Peanuts all over the floor, but the music was amazing. It's great. So I met Tom there and he and I were friends, very good friends until he passed away. And then I followed his band for many years, the Surfside Six right. around Detroit and they played at the Presidential Inn and you know, a lot of different different places around town. and. Through him, I met um, oh a lot of musicians, actually. But um, Bob Snyder, Bob Snyder, who is a was terrific clarinet player. You know, player. at that oh, time yeah. he was kind of the the Dave Bennett, the Dave Bennett of, of clarinet, the 1940s saxophone, and, 50s, right? <laughs> and he had the house band on WJR at that time, and he off and on had uh, the house band at the Grand Hotel. So, you know, oh, yeah. my mother and I went up there every year for the jazz. And um, I saw him playing on the back of a wagon at one of the parades up at, uh, uh, at Mackinac Island. He had his little yeah. jazz band. Yeah. And they were he terrific. Was, he was an amazing player. Yeah. He, um, there is a story that I do know about. He, he was performing with um, Pops Temple, who was a very fine trumpet player in this area. And they played a they played a gig in um, at, at a man's house in Ohio somewhere who had a firehouse and he had three different bands playing that night, and one of the bands was Lionel Hampton. Wow! And of course Bob Snyder wanted to sit in with Lionel Hampton in the worst way. Of course. And the the guys in in our band um, made arrangements for him to sit in with Lionel Hampton. Wow! So when that that solo came about, you know, Bob Snyder had 
the biggest ego in the world. And <laughs> he walked in and he was going to sit in and Lyle Hampton said, well, what would you like to play? And he said, do you know Flying Home? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Lionel yeah. Hampton wrote it. Of course. But, um, right. So, yeah, there were a lot of stories about, about Bob Snyder and most of them were true. But he was a, a dear friend. Yeah. You know, he died a couple years ago, but he was, he was a great guy. And Bill played bass with him. I, yes. I yeah, my right. husband played bass with him um, for for many, many years. Well, tell us about this, this jazz club that was the early jazz club before you and Bill got involved. That was the, the Windsor, was it the Windsor Detroit Jazz Club? Yes, there was an entity in Detroit called the Windsor Detroit Jazz Club, which was started by Bill Knowles right. and his wife, Ricky Knowles, who I never met, and Emily Laura, who was uh, the queen of jazz in Detroit for so many years. Right. She was an avid promoter uh, until she was 99. And um, he did, um, he had, it was an all Dixieland club. Okay. Um, he had a lot of events in Windsor because he was a Windsor resident. Right. And, but they eventually brought a lot of events over here. So, um, gosh, a lot of people, you know, around here played for him. Chuck Moss was involved in that group as well. Right. And they had a lot of the same bands that played all the time. I think, uh, I think Dave Bennett got one of his first starts playing at the Steak and Ale okay. in, in Detroit with, uh, I think it was Dave Tatro and Chuck Moss. I'm not sure who the whole band was, right, but right. I've seen a recording and it was pretty amazing. Yeah, I'll bet. So um, as the years went on, um, Bill Knowles decided that he couldn't do that anymore. And um, my husband Bill and I were doing some volunteer work for him. And he did a newsletter back then. So I took over the design of his 12-page newsletter. Wow. I was working full time. But we, we did that and we got to be friends. Um, but eventually he couldn't do that anymore. Right. So um, he asked us if we would take over the club. And we got together a group of a lot of Detroit musicians. Mm -hmm. Bill Meyer, oh, yeah. um, Tom Saunders, um, Dave and Kathy Tatro. We had a meeting at our house, probably 30 people, to mm -hmm. decide which direction we were going to go and where we were going to be a 501c3 and blah, blah, blah. But it ended up that we decided we were going to expand the type of music that we offered to include um, swing, Right. and big band, but we were not going to lose our traditional roots. So we would right. always have traditional you know, jazz, Dixieland concerts. And, right. and I think we've done a very good job of expanding our horizons without losing um, the traditional, you know, our mission. Not only that, but you've expanded your audience dramatic, dramatically. I don't know how many members you have in the club now, but it's... We were up to 900 members at wow. one time. Um, but we continue to, you know, Bill died a year and a half ago, so it's pretty much um, been up to me, and I, I am not ever hesitant to ask advice of my friends, the right. other musicians, mm -hmm. who they think I should hire. This year, I had 94 requests for 39 openings. Wow. So... So, so you had your job pick, just picking the bands it's that are really going to play. It's a challenge, and it's kind of heart-wrenching for me. I'm not very, um, what's the right word? I, don't, I, you know, I want to hire them all. Sure. But um, <laughs> if it weren't for the volunteers we have, you know, working at Shields, we're at Shields um, actually several Saturday afternoons a month now, 1 to 3.30. But people know they have to come by noon to get a seat. Right. And um, I have Carmen Myers our volunteer at the door who's just fabulous. I couldn't do anything without Carmen. And we just have a, a host of volunteers that help seat and they help with everything, sound equipment. And so, yeah, we, we're we trying to become more diverse, hire some younger musicians, right. and yet keep the, you know, keep the audience's favorite. So it's, it's kind of a juggling act. It's yeah. difficult at times. It's got to be hard because, like you say, you've got so many groups and you only have so many slots to fit those groups into. Yeah. And somebody's got to be the bad guy. Yeah, right? it's usually me. Of course, it's <laughs> always me. But, um, you know, I rely on, on the judgment of, you know, often I'll ask Craig Strain or Jerry McKenzie or right. just my audience. You know, I get right. wonderful feedback. We have the most fabulous patrons. Oh, yeah. that belong to the Greater Detroit Jazz Society. I mean, I personally, I don't know that I would go anywhere every Saturday. <laughs> 
and sit and listen to jazz for three hours if it wasn't my entity, but they are there, they are loyal, they love, they just love the music. They don't all love every concert, but they pretty much, the ones that like a particular genre are there. They're there, you right. Know. Now, and, now you, you're doing these concerts on, on uh, Saturdays. Um, how often do you do these concerts? Well, it used to be on the first and third Saturday of every month, right. but um, now, now I'm doing more like three a month to just try to get okay. more of the bands in. Um, some months I've, we've done four, but it's really too much for me. <laughs> but so, so you have this, you have this uh, uh, venue of Shields. Yes, the and Shields at 10, and, 10 and Telegraph. And they, they, they let you in every Saturday. You, you've got a, the whole room for the jazz club. And we you've have, got a tremendous number of mm -hmm. people that come in. You fill it up almost every time you yeah. have a concert. We have the dining room, which um, will seat 128 people. That's okay. it's pretty crowded, but um, often we have that many people, you right. know, and um, seating is always an issue, <laughs> as you know, George. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you know, we have, um, I always say I don't take reservations, but I have patrons that are there every time. Right. And they donate money, yeah. you know, sure. to have some privileged seating, and they deserve it. So the rest of the people, you know, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, trying to figure out where we're going to put them all. But, right. but they're all wonderful, um, and they're just, they're absolutely st just amazing uh, fans. But you've had some terrific groups in there, which is the, the, the other side of the picture. I mean, you, yeah. you, you have great fans. The reason you have great fans is you have great music. You know, I've, I've been there yeah. for several of the concerts, and I prefer the Detroit musicians to a lot of the pros that come into town. Sure. You know, uh, I, and, and that's why the, the uh, Michigan Jazz Festival I love so much. Yes. You know? Uh, yes. But anyway, we have jazz every other week, almost, or, or yeah. more than every other week. I have a great website that Janelle Reichman, the great clarinetist designed for us and so all of our concerts are up there it's hard to say it's a certain Saturday um, but if you check out our website right. it's greaterdetroitjazzsociety.com tells you when those concerts are and then um, I design flyers and hand them out at every right. concert so yeah. everyone knows who's coming and uh, twice a year we have um, at the Terrace Inn in, uh. in Bayview, we have Jazz Weekends. As you know, you're always there. Right. In the spring, we usually have, we have one band in the spring and then two bands in the fall. And it's always sold out. It's well, just- that's a great event. You come in on a Friday night, you mm -hmm. have a, a dinner, a, well, mm -hmm. I would say a snack, snack type dinner. Yep. And then you have music on Friday night, then you have music for Saturday afternoon. Yes. Jam session, and yes. then you have Saturday night concert. More of a formal dinner. Formal dinner. On and Saturday then you night. have a Sunday morning, you have mm -hmm. a, a kind of a, a brunch. jazz brunch. And the Terrace Inn is just a beautiful venue, you oh, know, yeah. and they've improved the food over the years, and the rooms are immaculate. And the ladies shop in Harbor Springs on Saturday <laughs> afternoon, and the guys watch football, but it's pretty much music all weekend long, like you say. Yeah, it's great. And a lot of our members come up, but we have new people all the time that go. They had no idea we had a whole weekend of jazz away. It's very fun. That's been going on for years. And yeah. I, you know, I've heard about it years and years ago, and I said, you know, I got to figure out how to get there and when it is, and yeah. then I finally ran into you guys at the Jazz Society and said, whoa, I'm going to do this. Yeah, and you've been there ever since. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. great. <laughs> COVID didn't even stop us up there. So. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, talk to me a little bit about, you've got another venue that you do in the summer. It's called the Rec Bowl. Yes. Talk to me about um, that a little bit. In downtown Mount Clemens, um, this was our 11th year to do the Rec Bowl series. Fred and Patty Fox own the Rec Bowl, it's a bowling alley, but it has a marvelous outdoor um, seating area and a dance floor that seats about 250 people. Right. So, you know, we, uh, Fred Fox picks the band for that event. He picks oh, he the band okay. that he likes the best, and they're the same four bands every year, yeah. usually, but they're dance yeah. bands. So, right. um, it's a dance venue, and he does barbecue, and you know, it's very, very popular, and, and um, it's a lot of fun. I've been out there a couple times, and I 
I would like to go more, but I just, it just didn't work out for some reason. I don't know. What night is that? It's a ways away. Yeah. It's every um, Wednesday in the Wednesday summer, night. and we start in May, and we went through October this year. Right. Um, they've, they've added sides that, you know, close down if right. it gets cold or windy or rainy heaters and in heaters there. and, yeah. you know, but it's, it's a, a marvelous venue. It's yeah. just a lot of fun. And there's some great bands, like you say, that, that play yep. a lot for dancing, but a yep. lot of jazz yep. as well. Yeah. It's usually, um, well, it was Johnny Trudell's big band. It's now Jeff Trudell's big band Je and um, Dave Bennett and Planet D. No Net. Yep. And um, TNT. Is one of them. And TNT. Right. Big band performs there. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it's, it's um, who am I missing? I'm missing one. Oh, the boy. Bands. I don't know, but don't anyway, they're anyway. all good bands. Yeah, they're all good bands. They're all <laughs> dance bands, so. Well, tell me about, also, there's another event that's coming up, it, which is uh, New Year's. You guys always have, have, for the last, what, four or five years? Yeah, you know, I think this is our eighth year. Eighth year? Um, we decided that we didn't want to be out late on New Year's Eve, but we wanted to have a great band. Yeah, right. And so we talked to Shields and, um, we said, how about if we did an early bird New Year's Eve? And um, they were all for that, you know, they, they love it. So it's 6 to 9 p.m. It is sold out. It sells out immediately every year. Right. And the band is, uh, actually Jerry McKenzie organizes the band for us, but he doesn't play. We call it Jerry McKenzie's Just Jazz. Right. So that he can have his name out there. But we've right. got three vocalists this year. We have uh, Kate Patterson and Barbara Ware and uh, Ramona Collins. Oh, wow. They're all and great, then, they're all yeah, great singers. Rich Michaels group and Dave Tater on trumpet and Edward Gooch oh, on yeah, trombone. Great. And we've had this band for a couple of years because they just put on a marvelous show. It's a lot of fun. They do. Yeah. They do. And at 9 o'clock, we toast somewhere in the world that it's midnight. So it's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> Champagne toast. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So it's terrific. So we've we talked about the uh, Terrace Inn. And that's, uh, like I say, that's a terrific venue. There's an awful, awful lot of uh, things to do in Petoskey yes. while you're there. Yes. I know some people like to go and hit the casino. Yes, <laughs> and the wineries. And the wineries, right. I love that place. Yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really a nice venue. The owners are terrific, and um, the food's good. It's, it's really fun. It's a place you can really relax when you go away. Let's talk about a little bit about some of the groups that are that are playing at um, at uh, Shields that that do these these Saturday concerts. Um, you know, you've got you've got big bands like the Craig Strain Orchestra. Craig Strain Orchestra will be there um, on December 10. With uh, he's actually bringing three vocalists this time. He's got the wonderful Emma Abacasm, of course. Oh yeah, is always with him. And uh, Marvin Jones is going to oh, great. be a guest that day. Do a couple of tunes and Kate Patterson. Fantastic. So that's the tenth, and then on the seventeenth we do a holiday party with Dave Tatro and um, I think Barbara Ware will be singing. I think Marvin Jones is singing then as well. Um, and then Carrie Price will be the first concert next year, you know. Okay. Who's who of American blues vocalists. Oh, yeah, and right. Nobody does blues like Carrie does. Right. And she's got a great group coming in. Um, let's see. I should have brought my list with me. <laughs> but we recently had a group called Third Coast Swing, which does uh, gypsy jazz. And oh, I, saw, I was there for that group. They, they were, were fantastic. They were just Fabulous. Yeah, they were. And the, the crowd went wild. So um, I remembered the days when Dave Bennett played with the Hot Club of Detroit. And I said to them, have you ever heard of Dave Bennett? And they said, we are dying to do a, a job with Dave Bennett. Really? Because he plays that kind of music very yeah. well as well. So on March 18th, we're going to have the Hot Club of Detroit um, along with their female vocalist and Dave Bennett, his special wow. guest. So we yeah, have that be. coming up. Um, oh, we have a lot. I mean, yeah. you can probably think of some that you, that well, it, it, that it, you come to see too. Like Cakewalk and Jazz Band from Toledo with Nicole yeah. Heitger. Traditional jazz, they're great. Traditional jazz. But well, um, some of the groups like the Terry Lauer on piano and the, that those groups are just those Edie, combos. Edie are Evans just Hyde. Phenom phenomenal groups. Yeah, we've had some really really unusual um, groups, and we have a lot more coming up. I'm going to bring some new things in Great. this year that 
people have asked for. And um, yeah, I think, you know, we try to we try to bring in what people really want to hear. Of course. Yeah. So, um, so far I have about 10 requests for January and February, but they're already booked. Yeah. So, yeah. Don't forget um, Starduster's big band now. I haven't <laughs> forgotten. We're coming to see your band next week. Oh, are you? Great. Mm -hmm. Friday, a week okay. from Friday. Fantastic. We'll be there. It'll be good. I haven't forgotten. Now, tell me about this garden club that you belong to. Oh, I'm, um, it's the Master Gardener Society of Oakland County, which okay. is the largest master gardener group in Michigan, and um, I'm on that board. We're, they're just absolutely wonderful. So being, you're a master gardener? Being a master gardener changed my life forever. Really? We're under the auspices of Michigan State University. That's fantastic. Of course, they make sure that we're on the up and up. So. Someday you can tell me how to grow tomatoes. <laughs> I've been having a heck of a time with growing tomatoes. It depends on the year. You know, <laughs> This year was a good year, but last year was terrible. So they, yeah. they don't like certain weather. Well, my wife thought she was going to grow the tomatoes better <laughs> than I did, so she tried it this year, and they were terrible. Oh, well. they were? So oh. I think it must be to have something to do with the soil. Oh, I'll come over. <laughs> a little lesson. So I, my house is on the Troy Garden Walk next year. The Troy Garden oh, Club fantastic. puts on a walk that I've been on before, but so that's an extra level of stress in my life right now. So. You're probably the busiest person that I know. <laughs> you, well, I don't know how you get it all done. You've got the newsletter that you do every every week or whatever it is. You're all, you're constantly putting emails out, telling people well, where people are playing. I don't do the emails like I used to. That that was like an eight-hour project That's to put a together time. a newsletter where you know where everybody is performing. Um, I do have a wonderful Facebook page, and we post a lot of things there. It's right. just Greater Detroit Jazz Society Facebook page, but I have about 3,500 members up there. And my goal was to get all the bands to post their events right. up there, yeah. so that it would be a good place for people to find out what's going on and it's working very well a lot of a lot of local bands that are wonderful that you you wouldn't know about so facebook is a, is a great um, resource yeah. to find out where the jazz yeah, is every, every yeah. week i'm out there every day or two and check out yeah. everything that's going yeah. on it really and, is and i post a few things out there as sure well. i and yeah. i repost i try to repost all <laughs> the bands that you know that i yeah. know that are good right to that page, so that helps too. Let's talk about the we Michigan Jazz Festival. We forgot about the Michigan Jazz Festival. Yeah, that's that's a huge event. You know, and, and personally, I like that festival a lot better than the Detroit Jazz Festival. Detroit Jazz Fe Festival tends to bring in outside talent from outside the area. They do. Michigan is all Detroit area musicians, which I just love. Well, the Michigan Jazz Festival was formed 27 years ago by Johnny Trudell and Tom Saunders and uh, Amo Morrow right. just for that purpose because the Detroit Montreux Jazz Festival I believe was headed in another direction. They didn't right. want to hire Michigan musicians. So um, of course all the original founders have passed away and I was humbly asked to be on that board a few years ago. And um, we've become extremely diverse yeah. We now have uh, um, Scott Gwinnell and Dennis Teeny and um, Vincent Chandler are putting together ex excellent educational um, things that are on Zoom. You can go to michiganjazzfestival.org. I've, I've taken part in a couple of those educational uh, excellent. series and they're absolutely great. Yes. You know, you, you do a Saturday morning, I think it's Saturday morning. Well, now they've moved to Sunday evening. There's okay. one for people in the music business that's happening a week from Sunday that'll be, that will be excellent. Yeah, but I saw that posted yeah. as well. But the festival itself is the third um, Sunday in July every year. We were back with a vengeance this year. We had seven stages, 42 bands, a that's lot fantastic. of new young musicians, and um, it's just fabulous. Our board is younger and more diverse and right. we've really done, you know, I'm, I, I'm kind of in the fundraising end of it. I think mm -hmm. we came up with an idea a few years ago um, for volunteers of the Greater Detroit Jazz Society to sit at the front table where people come in and right. give five dollars to keep it alive. Well at first they didn't know what we were doing but this year they came in with their money ready. They knew we That's were there. Great. 
And I think we were the least. And they weren't five dollar bills either. I'll bet. No, we had some hundreds, <laughs> and they were they were happy to see us and get their program. And that's great. And it was a wonderful event. But I love that I love that um, mm -hmm. that venue because, like you say, there's seven stages, and you have very diverse groups, uh, everything from a just a simple piano piano bar. Yes. To uh, yes. big bands. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, everything in between. And Craig Strain is our president. You know, of course, he does a wonderful job. Uh, Bart Pollitt, who's been the li liaison with um, Schoolcraft College for so many years, just right. procured the college again for us again this year. So oh, we will great. be able to have it one more year. We had some issues with food. You know, there wasn't the a last lot one, of food there available. Was, there was no food available. Right. That, that was a problem. Right. But, but Joni Schott came up with the idea to have these fabulous jazz pins. Yeah. We sell them everywhere. We've saturated all the women. Now we sell them to the guys. They're twenty dollars and they're real diamonds. And they raise a lot I of money. I tell you uh, real diamonds, huh? <laughs> That's what I tell them. <laughs> My wife bought one and wore it. And then the last time we went to Petoskey she said, Oh, I've lost it. So she bought another one. So now we have then, and then, guess what? She finds the old one. Of course. So now we have two. Of course. <laughs> so one for you to wear. Yeah, right. We want to see them on all the guys now. Well, that's great. Yeah. Anyway, Sally, it's been fantastic having you George, on the program. George, thanks so much for inviting you've been, me. You've been I, a terrific guest. Uh, I'm really, guest. I was so humbled when you asked me to be interviewed. I said, nah, I don't think so. But anyway, it's been <laughs> it's, great fun. It's been a great, great conversation. Great fun. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much for yeah, coming. Yeah, thanks for all you do. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a, certainly a pleasure today having uh, Sally with us, and uh, we hope to see you next time. <laughs>